I'm honored I'm here to see y'all. Huh? I'm honored I'm here to see you all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you keep I've been doing it. Uh, I don't know how many years before COVID I did it. You did it for, yeah, you. So, it's time for somebody else to. And besides that, the new technologies and everything that came out, all these digital modes and stuff, and that's not me. And uh, so, somebody that's versed in the new technologies needs to, because that's where it seems like ham radio's going. Uh, so, anyway, it's just time. You gonna keep working the bar station? Yeah, that's that's my that's my type of ham radio. <laughs> okay, that's, even though we do even though we do most most everything the Mars does now is digital. But uh, is that right? Yeah, we don't we don't do uh, the, the nets are still voiced, but uh, all the traffic and everything that we pot, that we handle nowadays is all digital. Well, it Encrypted. Makes, it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Encrypted. Because we're working for the DOD now. We're not yeah. working for the soldier in the field. Yeah. So uh, everything we do now is encrypted and uh, it's uh, yeah. Uh, digital, digital for what they do makes sense. Yes, it yes, it does. It yes, it does. Better. But I, I don't. Get through better. I don't agree with. Yeah. I don't agree with the way they're doing it. Yeah. Uh, they've made it. They made it too difficult. Well, I won't say too difficult. They made. They made it difficult for the uh, ham radio operator that was never in the military. Doesn't understand the military. So, yeah. Uh, we had uh, we had digital modes from from the start. And of course, you know, in the beginning of cell type, that was a digital mode. Yeah. Then they came up with uh, several other digital modes, and they worked just fine. And uh, the army went nuts, and they decided, oh no, we got to have this special. We got to have this same same digital mode that the that the uh, military uses. So they converted this all over to that. And the first time we did an exercise, it took 35 minutes to pass the first message. <laughs> yeah. Because the digital mode that they use is, is very atmospheric uh, dependent and they said oh well, that's alright we'll just go from radio to radio to radio well try to get five or six radio guys there together you know and I, of course I put my two cents worth in and said what they ought to do is between the stations within the communications group like Tennessee or the, the fourth in communications wing which is the uh, Tennessee, Florida, North and South, Carolina, Georgia, Mississippi, Alabama. Let us use the old digital modes. They work just fine. And we can we can encrypt the message and send it. This message encrypts it and does it all, all at the same time. But no, and they just send it to a, a station that is designated to talk to the DOD and he can put it on their special and send it to them because we're supposed to be able to assist the National Guard all that good stuff well they can't talk to us because their equipment won't talk to ours they don't have the same encryption, key, encryption keys that we do so it was just made most sense whatsoever but anyway that's that's just the way it is yeah that can be fixed it just takes it just takes well, it's going to take something to happen, and they realize, oh crap, our system don't work. Well, I mean, you get the same <laughs> yeah. keys, you know. so that can be fixed. It's just a matter Yeah, I mean, they'd have to send us out. And, and But see, the point is, this. this. So you guys have to handle the encryption? Mm hmm. So who does that for you? It comes out of DLD. 
I mean, but who handled it up there? It's got, I have no idea. Rules and regulations and all that. I have no I idea. Well, we have to, we have to go through cyber cyber training and everything else. Yeah. Every year. Uh, the I mean, the, there's a lot of stuff on how that stuff's got. You know, yeah, the the, the 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 pro the program that encrypts it and all that stuff. Uh, it's we get probably it, done a lot different than we get it twice a year because we used to have to load the, the things yeah. every so hour, so many hours you had to yeah, reload. Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah. We we get it twice a year. Yeah, and it comes with the encryption keys already. And we have the encryption keys because they're so it lasts that long, huh? But yeah, we used to be every thirty days. Yeah. Well, that's why I say we're not on the same. Yeah. Cyber. Right. Than they are. So. Right. I used to carry a SOI around my neck on a chain. Yeah. Changed out every month. Uh -huh. Had every day had yeah. a different code. I remember you know. That. Yeah. So. Uh, and they they we and anyway, we we have a year long encryption book that gives us just standard encryption. Like if you check into a net that nobody knows uh, you're new on that net or something, they're going to challenge you, mm -hmm. and you got to they'll 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 ask you to authenticate. So they authenticate, yeah. And uh, that kind of stuff. So oh. it's getting that away. It's coming. It's evo still evolving. And uh, this year they came out, and, and Air Force is trying to divorce itself from the Army. <laughs> okay. The yeah. Army, Imagine that. because of the communications need, and, and I totally understand it. I totally under, I understand it. Their communications needs are a lot bigger than any of the other services. Because you got platoons out here in the jungle. It's different. You know, it's yeah. totally different. So I understand why they they've been put in the lead with this. But uh, you got to <laughs> you got to kiss their ass to get some of some of the stuff out of it. Okay. So the Air Force has decided they're going to divorce themselves totally from the Army's needs, and so they were coming out. They were coming out this year, this in January, with a new modem. That was not going to work through the common sound card that everybody's been using, and I finally told them on one of the meetings. I said, "You, you guys are going to you're going to lose everybody." Because I said, "I'm not going out and buying a three thousand dollar radio just for a damn sound card when what I've got works perfectly." Mm -hmm. Well, they finally they finally changed the program so that it would work with an outboard sound card. Stuff like that. Anyway, all right, let's talk about soldering. Now, you may wonder why, and these are not all of them, that I have so many soldering irons. Okay? In 60 years of ham radio, <laughs> things have changed. Okay? Back when we were working on tubes and running wires and on chassis, these were the best things in the world. Pull the trigger, it heats up, you solder it, put it down. So, and this one's a pretty heavy one. This is a 250, 200, 260 watt. So it generates, generates the same amount of heat as all the rest of them. All of them, the rest of them generate about 750 degrees to melt the solder. But, they don't have enough wattage behind them to hold the heat in this tip. So that's why this one's 260. Same, same company, same gun, this one's only 140. Uh, so for wiring up an old tube chassis and that kind of stuff, these two, these, these, were, these were perfect, perfect for it. Uh, then printed circuit boards came along and you look at print, printed circuit boards and you look at the tip of this thing and you realize that a lot of the, 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 the lands and everything on a printed circuit board are a lot, you can get two or three uh, circuits, uh, lines on the size of that tip. So this does not make a good solder knife to do circuit board work. So. These came out, and this is one. This one doesn't work. Uh, I've never gotten into it. It's, it's adjustable voltage, and it finally quit. 
and so but what was nice about these and I'm not gonna be able to do it I didn't bring a tool along <coughs> anyway let's see if this one will do it that one that one works that one's uh, well this is not the same type but then I have one here that's just standard like a plug it in and but you see the tip it's it's now down to a size to where you can get on a printed circuit board and, and work without getting a, a solder a solder uh, across different different si uh, different lands on a uh, uh, on a circuit board. But this and and then you came along and these were great. This was great. Uh, this unscrews and you can screw that over it and now you've got a desolder. You squeeze it, put it down. This this gets hot, just like the tip of a saw. You put it down on a spot on the circuit board, let the bulb go, and sucks the solder right up out of it. <laughs> and then you can get and then you can get the component out. Uh, there are a lot of other things that do the same thing. This does the same thing here. You push it down, put it over, heat it up, and it sucks the solder right up. So that that allows you to desolder and take take components off of a printed circuit board to change uh, or to, you know, if you have, sometimes you have to take components off to get to another component on some of these earlier circuit boards. Uh, and I don't have one, but the new soldering is an air solderer where instead of having a tip, it has a air blowing through, hot air blowing through it, and you put it down on it, and it melts the solder, and you just pull the the uh, like a you know, a, a IC that's soldered, you just put that. They have different size tips on it, so you can put it over a, a, a CPU and he all the all of the circuits at one time and just pull it up off the core. And do the same thing when you put a new one down. You just put it over the top of it, heat it, and just sucks it right, puts it right down. I don't have one. I I can't see those little components. <laughs> On the circuit board <coughs> to start with, so yeah. yeah, that's what that's what this is for. You got to have one of these, you know, because I'm telling you, that's the little things are hard to see. Oh, this yeah. one's got an extra, you know. If I can't see it with that, I can put that down it. And if I can't see it with that, I ain't gonna do it. You know, when I modded some of these new rails, the, the diode or resistor, whatever, I was taking off like a grain of pepper. Oh yeah, looks like to get down in there with those. Some of these, some of these, glasses. some of these radios that come and have to be wide banded, uh, or open them up so they'll transmit every place. You go in there and look at that little thing, and it's just like a, it's just like a grain of sand. Uh, and like I say, I've got. Oh, here it is. That's to take those things off. Yeah, that's and that little thing is a spade tip, and it's almost in a lot of cases it's it's still wider than the than the circuit the, the uh, piece that I'm put taking out. I usually put it down there and get one side loose and get the other side loose, and I just do that. I don't know where it lands. Yeah, because I can't see it. Get them too hot and just disappear. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. And uh, so, but some of the things now this is a heavier duty iron. This is the soldering iron I used at the phone company when I got in the central office to solder all the wires and everything that we had to solder there. And uh, they were still more like, these guns would have worked just as well in the central office, but these things you plugged in, you plugged in and either had one of these and you just laid it, and it stayed hot all day long. And so when you needed it, and they were, you see the long cord on it, well, it down, down the way on some of these central offices, there's another one down there and another one down there. And uh, when we had to go in there and do that kind of work, and when I retired, I took mine home. <laughs> I figured I could use it. And I've got one just like that. I've got one of these on my, under my, it fits under my, under my table. And then I have one of these right beside it in a stand that I built. And when I'm working, I got both of them hot. And I just take whichever one I need. If I need something large, I've got that. And if I'm looking at, if I'm working on something on a circuit board, I've got this one. And uh, uh, of course, 
I've got all kinds of things you gotta have if you're working and and uh, I just happen to have left over class four couple of dogs in here. So if you've got to if you've got to uh, solder these diodes together, it's kind of hard to hold these together and solder them. So it's nice to have a little appliance that you can, and you can sit there and solder it, or you can take, you, you solder two wires together, then you can do the same thing. It's a little, I'm, I keep telling myself, I'm, I've, I've got a couple of, I melt lead in a little frying pan. I've got a couple of things, and I just I need to I need to melt one of those, make one of those, and screw this to it so it doesn't go anywhere. Uh, like this one. You see that it's not going anywhere. And that's this is the one I use mostly to do anything with uh, soldering PL two fifty nines. I just open it up. Put the PL259 in there and I can solder it. Now let's talk about PL259s a minute. I'm sure everybody's tried to solder them and have a hell of a time doing it. You can't hardly get the solder to melt on it and stick to it and everything else. There's two secrets. One, you gotta take a little file and just lightly run it over that hole in the PL259. What you're doing there is you're cutting the chrome. And underneath the chrome is copper. Underneath the copper is nickel. And solder will stick real good to copper. So you just rough it up enough that the copper gets in there. But the secret is you got to have a tip. You got to have a tip that will hold the heat. And if you take this tip and put it on something like that, it sucks the heat right out of it. Yeah, I remember you talking about that in a previous class. Yeah, and it'll suck it right big, out of it. Great big solder. And right then there. it won't solder. You darn sure, you can almost do it. I don't know what the wattage is on this. Uh, I've never thought about finding out. Uh, we have di have different tips. Just, and uh, so I've never, I've never, I've never really tried to dis discover because all I cared about is it worked and what I needed it for to solder. And it works good in my shop. From general soldering. This is the one I use pretty much for general soldering. I was soldering wires together. I always solder my connectors on my uh, power poles and uh, th this works really well for that. I put them in this and just touch the solder to it enough so it's not going to pull out. Yeah, I should have done that. <laughs> you found out, right? Well, last night I ran the Delta Club's net and got home just in time to take my mobile out of the car, set it up in the house. I'm, I'm really used to it. We've got a separate power supply in there. As soon as I plugged it, that T connector in, one of the wires popped out out of the crimp. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I pivoted really quick to HT and pushed yep. it to the yep. end. Compression is good for some things, but it's not good for anything you've got to pull on. Okay? So. Uh, uh, power poles are great. I like them. I got them on everything. Uh, even my, my 500 watt solid state amplifier, I've got a 70, 70, 75 amp power pole, poles on it. Uh, but, and I crimp them. And the only reason I crimp them is it keeps them on the end of the wire till I can solder them. And, uh, I just put them right in there and solder them, and then push them into the into the power pole. So, PF, go back to PL two fifty nines. That's that's one I remember. <laughs> I remember that from a previous class. Yeah. yeah, I probably told talked about this when we did PL two fifty nine. Yep, exactly. This is a PL two fifty nine iron. Now, uh, the, I wish the tip were smaller. Okay. But you only need about that much of the tip in there anyway. And this is a 350 watt iron. And it is not, you're not gonna suck the heat out of this. You take a lay it on PL259 for 30, 40 seconds, and 
feed the solder in there, take it off, and if you prepared the PL259 right, you got a perfect connection. As long as you use this. Looks. Solder flux. I have a this is a plumbing flux brush. I cut it off because this the, usually it's about that long because they want and I just put it on the put it on the uh, the shield of the coax when I put it in PL259 and then when they get it in there then I put a little bit over there on the hole and you don't need to solder all four holes you know all you're doing is it it touches inside there without you ever soldering it but it's not going to be a a uh, uh, tight connection, uh, a good connection. So you want to solder at least one hole so that you get a good solid connection. And I even put it on the, the center conductor uh, after I put the, you know, I stub it down the hole so that when I touch that with this, I mean it's almost immediate that it sucks the solder right in. And um, now this is a this works pretty good. Butane. Yep. <clears throat> Come on. Uh, Come on, don't be so persnickety tonight now. Well, it's not gonna lie. It's probably cold. You give a demonstration. Uh, it's cold. <laughs> it always happens when you give a demonstration. There you go. Now, so you can use it as a blowtorch if you need to. I'm going to do it. <laughs> there it goes. Anyway. Out in the field, that works pretty good, and it'll so, it will solder PL259. It takes a little longer to, to heat it up, but the tip of that with that flame blower on it, will it'll hold the heat, and you can do a PL259 in the field with it. And uh, I have two of those, and of course the other one's the one that works really well, and I didn't pick it up. But um, I take that, like on field day, that goes in my bag on field day. Even though I've got electricity and everything out there to do with the other, it's just quicker. If I got to do it, my, you know, I'm not going to be building anything out in the field as most cases. What I'm going to do is repairing, so that'll work great for repairing a broken wire or something like that. Uh, and this stays on my well, it actually stays on the floor under my desk. But uh, whenever I'm doing anything, I pretty well clamp it in this in this. Uh, uh, and so that hold because you hate, it's hard to solder it with you know you got to have another arm somewhere uh, so all that works now doing doing uh, circuit board work and 90 percent of the soldering you do this is good stuff to have real small stuff because you don't ever want to really have a lot of solder. You want just enough to cover the, what you're soldering it to and, and to make it thick. You don't want a big glob of solder. Now for PL259s and stuff, this is good because this is rosin core solder. This is not. This is rosin core, so it has this inside of it. So it does make soldering a little easier on stuff like that. Also, I hear that, you know, they started trying to get away from lead in the solder, mm -hmm. but they say the lead solder is better. Oh, yeah. For, well, uh, silver solder is the best. Yeah. <laughs> How expensive is that? Uh, <laughs> solder is not a strength connection. Does that make sense? It's not strong. Right. So... If you're soldering something that's going to have some sort of tension on it, you want to put something in there on that wire or whatever to take the tension, not the solder joint. Yeah. Okay. 
Silver solder is harder and has better strength. So if you have to solder something that's going to have tension on it, you want to use silver solder. And you can get it. You can get it pretty much, well, wherever you can find. You can get it on the internet without any problem. Uh, this is, uh, this doesn't give, this does not give the uh, formula. So I don't know what this is. I'm sure, I'm sure it's lead in tin, uh, but that's a five pound roll. Uh, oh, wait a minute, maybe this one does. No, well, it probably does, but it's been, This was a pretty good, this was about a three pound coil and it's been used quite a bit. I didn't bring any of my smaller, smaller rolls, but. Uh, Can I mention something? I, um, you know, if a dipole breaks, that tree limb hits it, it's a strand or so, and, and it's a big old limb and it <coughs> broke it. And you want to solder it back. What I found if the strander, you can, you can overlap them and, and twist them and then each end, roll it. That's called an AT&T splice. Yeah, AT&T <laughs> splice. Okay, I didn't know what it was called. Yeah, and then you slow it. solder and that, and it, even if solder yeah. cracks, it's still gonna be yeah. holding. Yeah. 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 Well, you, what you're doing is, is by going over like that, and then when you're putting the strength in the wire, Yeah. and the solder is just there to make the connection right. Uh, that's still not a, the solder is still not a, you know, you wouldn't want to, yeah. You wouldn't want to just fold the two it like this and straight back and solder them because they would they would eventually just pull apart. But yeah, that's an AT and T yeah. splice. That's one of the first things they teach us. In, yeah. in, in, I never had one break in the in, 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 uh, in climbing school when we go through climbing school, it teaches us to climb poles and install crossbars and all that good stuff, and then they teach you how to splice. And uh, uh, they have they have compression splices. Um, is it bad if you call it a Verizon splice? <laughs> or two they, uh, but that, their their compression splices are copper sleeves, and you put them on, and you you scrape them about three times on each side, and they're not going to come apart. The ones we use on house wire, you put the wires up in them like this and crimp it, and the and the it pulls this way, not this way. I've never had I've never had a I've never had a B connector pull, uh, come apart like that. Usually the wire breaks, uh, and they tell you not to twist it together and put it in that B connector and then then compress it because it doesn't get good compression across both wires that way. And uh, uh, what else? What else? Um, you probably won't ever do any unless you build a copper J pole. Uh, there's actually two kinds of solder. There's electric solder, like this, and then there's a plumbing solder. Well, a plumbing solder has acid in it. So if you try to use plumbing solder on a circuit board or something, over time it's going to eat it up. So you want to be careful. If you go to Home Depot and so forth and go back there where they have solid iron, you need to be sure to, to make sure you pick up the electrical solder and not, they have both of them right there together. And uh, so you can pick up the wrong one. Personally, I would get on the internet and order five pound five pound roll of so rod and core solder. Be, I don't know how many years I've had this. But I still got plenty. Matter of fact, I'll probably you guys will probably get that out of my estate when I when I go go go. It'll probably still be there. Uh, matter of fact, I have another one at the house. Uh, I couldn't find this one. I don't know what I, I I don't remember now. I put it somewhere so I wouldn't forget where it was. And I forgot where it was, so I bought me another roll. So I've got another roll of that at the house too. Uh, and this does, this, believe it or not, this doesn't work worth a crap on copper pipe. For the same reason that this one doesn't work worth a crap on PL259. 
The flame on this thing is so small that it does not heat up enough of the area of the copper pipe for the solder to flow. Uh, the guys using a, a big propane torch or, or, or one of those bottles with the end on it that's got a big enough flame that when he puts it on that copper it heats it all the way around and normally all he does is, all he does is take this and set it on the joint and it just sucks it all the way around and makes a good joint. They don't do that anymore. I just had a hot water tank put in this past week, and everything is crimped. Mm -hmm. Not in my house. <laughs> if you get anything it. done, it will be. They uh, did my Oh, do you? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're gonna all that. All those joints are, are gonna eventually go away because everything is going to that crimp. I had a natural gas line extended in the attic for a, a Nivian uh, con continuous heat water heater, and they crimped the pipe there. Yeah. And they didn't do it right the first time. The gas mail started oh, going yeah. everywhere. <laughs> they had to redo it. Well, yeah, well, that, that's that's the code that if they crimp a gas line, they have to Spread. they have to soap it, to make sure it's yeah, not they had to do that. Yeah. So, and uh, after the guys left, putting in my hot water heater, I went and got me a little jar and mixed me up some soap. <laughs> Check mine. <laughs> I went around and checked it myself anyway. Not that mine's gas, but I just checked the water connection. Make sure that uh, there wasn't any water coming out, but I was going to check it anyway. And uh, funny story about that, I had to, had my AC guy out, and they do they check your plumbing and everything. Yeah, they, they do it twice a year, and he was telling me, oh, you know, I can get you this. I, I put a little alarm down there, and if that if any water gets in that pan, it'll go off and everything. No, nah, I don't want the baby. I don't. Want that was he was in my house and did that on the 29th and on the 5th my pan was full of water <laughs> so anyway any questions oh this is always a good thing to have something now if you can't find one of these uh, I think I picked that one and I picked this one up at a ham fest but you can bend one I don't need to do that. I just kind of balance it right on the table. <laughs> out of a, out of a, some number six copper wire, and it works just it just works just it works perfect. Uh, doesn't make any difference whether it's this big iron. The little, of course, the little iron will just about go in there like that. This one works good for this one. Same thing. And if you bend it right, you take a couple of screws. If you want, you got a workbench, you can screw it to the workbench, and it's not going to go anywhere. <coughs> so uh, I bought this. I bought this for a dollar at Dayton. Believe mm -hmm. it or not, first table I went to, and I walked in the in the flea market and he looked at it and I picked it up and he says uh, he, uh, I said how much is this and he said well I don't even know what it is it's a dollar I said okay buddy give it to me and after I bought it he says do you know what it is and I said I sure do I said it's a cage to put your soldering iron in well that's awful big I said yeah well you, if you've got a big soldering iron you've got to have a big cage and uh, of course, I already had this one, and I mean, it's great. Uh, this thing will hum every once in a while. It's probably because of this heat shield right here. It's not loose, but it's loose enough that that hundred and that uh, uh, sixty cycles. It'll it'll hum every once in a while, and you put it in here, and it sounds like this thing is is humming, but it's, it's actually the iron. And because uh, that thing takes uh, probably somewhere between 15 and 20 minutes to get to its full heat, and it takes twice that long <laughs> to cool it. <laughs> so what I do a lot of times, if it's hot and I need to move it, I just wrap the, I just wrap the 
the uh, core around that and just put it in my tool bag. I was going to bring some stuff to solder, but you couldn't see it so much. <clears throat> and especially if I got a circuit board, I probably could have found an old circuit board somewhere. I could have taken some resistors or capacitors and stuff like that off of it. But, uh, I do IT work, and there's always motherboards and boards laying around. Oh yeah. Well, see, when you, get in, when you get into surface mount, that's past me by. I won't say it's passed me by. And I, I had uh, I was supervisor of the radio shop at Bell South in the '80s, and uh, <clears throat> Motorola was just coming out with, with uh, pagers that were strictly all surface mount. So they sent me down to uh, Sunrise, Florida, to the Motorola place, and this is a pretty neat place. It's a square building, and all the classrooms and everything, and offices are all around. And I asked one guy one time, I said, what's in the middle? He said, well, you got to have a special pass to get in the middle. I said, you see all the Japanese guys? And I said, yep. I said, they work in the middle. And he says, they're designing all these pagers and radios in the, in the middle. And you can't go in there unless you've got a special pass. So anyway, they sent me down there to to learn how to install and, and disassemble surface mount components. And it's great, great class, man. I mean, it was fantastic. The only problem was that $38,000 component installer and, de in, uh, and, and uninstaller, I knew the company wasn't going to buy. I did was, you know, you put it in there and you turn it around, get this over down on it and heat it and pull it off. I mean, it was great, fantastic. But I just knew the company wasn't going to pay $38,000 for one, and one wouldn't do us any good. We had to have at least two. Otherwise, you'd have people standing in line waiting for you to 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 take a component off of a circuit board. Has anybody been to MFJ and done the tour and seen their surface mount machine? Oh, man, y'all see that thing. It, it's like a pizza oven, you know. It, the board goes in on one side, and they've got reels, rolled reels of these uh, oh, resistors and diodes yeah. and all that stuff. And I don't know how it works, but it's a whole row of them. And as it goes through, that machine's going, it plucks yeah. them off that tape, and it's And there's a little, uh, I forget what the, something in there, tacking material. And when it goes down, it, it stays there. Mm -hmm. And then it goes through the pizza oven part of it, heats up, and comes out the other end, everything's soldered on yeah, the Yeah, they, they have a pan in there with solder. That's the flow solder. Yeah. Flow solder, and they just take yeah. it, and it don't touch it. It just goes right over with just a fraction off the top of it, and it just kind of sucks that solder up on it, I guess. I've yeah. seen pictures of it. Yeah, I've seen both of the demonstrations. But, uh, but that new machine, <laughs> that was awesome to see that. <laughs> And I'd love to have one of those air solders, but it would sit on my bench and probably never get turned on because I don't do that kind of work anymore. Uh, you know, I built five repeaters over my time, and uh, some of them I built up from circuit boards. Uh, some of them I built took uh, GE Master Twos and and. Uh, rewired them and made them into repeaters and uh, I love the Master 2. It was perfect because they were all the same. The only difference was was this model was low band down around 30 megacycles. Then you had a, a uh, uh, another one that was up right around 6 meters. Then you had two of them on 140, uh, 135 to 170. There was two models there. And then you had, I think it was either one or two models up on 450. Was there a Motorola 3? Hmm? Motorola 3 version? I don't know. I, don't, I, don't I mean, G, excuse me, GE. Well, they had, they, there were several of them. But anyway, the, we had one for two meters the Master 2 was so nice was I could take the receiver out of this low band and it would fit right in to the 450 radio. So it made repeaters great. You could take, like, my six meter repeater. I had a six meter transmitter and a 450 receiver. And then on the, on the, is that right? 
Yes. Then on the receive side, I had a six meter receiver and a 450 transmitter. And I could swim part long, long as those 450 radio in there could see each other, I could have put that six meters, spread that six meters 20 miles apart. And uh, they were great. They, they were a little, they were a little, uh, they were a little complicated to modify because they had the the antenna switch was buried under one of the circuit boards, and it was a uh, and component and some components, and it was a booger to get that relay out, and then solder it so that you could put it directly out to a PL259. But they worked pretty good. I had a uh, I had a six meter built, and uh, uh, I was in process of building a 10 meter. And uh, my problem with 10 meter was it was antenna. Uh, it just I couldn't I couldn't come up with an antenna that I liked. Uh, the G's full duty cycle. Hmm? Were they full duty cycle? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they well you couldn't. I had hundred watt I had hundred watt versions and uh, uh, they they had you could I think you could take them down I think 10 watts was the lowest that you could take them down uh, and they had about a 20 watt 20 or 25 watt setting and that's what I used was that I mean uh, uh, 100, uh, 50 watt setting that's what I used for the repeaters and they had the heat sink uh, and all of the heat sink and like I say Throughout all those different radios, everything worked uh, uh, perfectly. And I had a, there was a company up, up uh, hmm, well, they were in Massachusetts or Rhode Island, NHRC, Nasty Hackers Radio Company. And these guys built controllers. And matter of fact, all my repeaters up until recently were uh, operated off of their controllers best things in the world. They worked so good. They were simple. They weren't complex with all this time voices and all this yeah. stuff. That, we had a Cat 1000 at Stark when I was yeah. a trustee down there. And I had they, to these were voice. These were voice, yeah. but they weren't computer voice. You recorded yeah, what you Yeah, you could you do wanted. either way. And, uh, but they built, <clears throat> they built a controller that you could sit into that master two, and you could pull out the audio squelch board and put that controller right in and work perfectly. Didn't have to do any fancy wiring or this, that, or the other. The, the only addition you could put a uh, uh, you could put a squelch tail eliminator in there so that you didn't. You know, sometimes on repeaters, when you let up on it, you get a little whoosh at the end. Well, they, they had a they had a circuit for that that would just plug right in. I mean, it plugged right in. There was two, four stops there for it, and it just sit right down on it. I still got the controllers at the house. I never, have I you, never put them in the repeaters. Have you noticed on the Germantown repeater when I and they have another something when I call in on it? As soon as I let off the mic, I hear my last bit of a syllable coming back to me. I don't know what's coming Well, some, that. some, the, the, the last, the, the, the last NHRC 10 that I bought had that option that you could, you know, touchstone, you could put it in there and you could test one, two, three, four, and then it would come back and give you the audio coming back so you could tell what your audio was. Has anybody checked in Germantown had that happen to them? Yeah. I've got a repeater now up in Illinois coming in on my on my repeater frequency. It's not coming in on my input, it's coming in on the outputs. But it's about 100 miles away, so conditions have been pretty good on two meters, I guess. So for spirit ducking. You know. And uh, matter of fact, I listened to their net the other night. <laughs> uh, they got a retired <laughs> net, and it's a retired net. Okay, guys, if anybody wants to talk to anybody, come on, we need some chatter. You know, it's not, not very much, not a very formal net, anyway. Um, what net is this? 
What net is this? It's up in Illinois somewhere. In Illinois, oh. I've got I've got the call sign written down. I, I, I get a I get the CW call sign and and yeah, I've got it written down somewhere. Matter of fact, can't remember whether it was Dayton. Or we went to Bowling Green to a ham fest in Bowling Green one time. Uh, anyway, I met the guy. He was walking around with his call sign, and I asked him, "You got a repeater on?" Yeah, yeah. I do too. I said, "I hear you guys all the time." Of course, I had, I had an eighteen foot uh, antenna at, at about eighty feet, and uh, so I would get, I. I List all kinds of stuff coming in on my receive. It never bothered the actual repeater, but because uh, I'd look at it when I'd hear it and be, you know, maybe two bars. But uh, okay, guys, that's all I have on soldering. Any questions? Anything? Anything? It's your last chance. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It, it's your last chance at the meeting. I'm still available for questions you can w4gmm at bellsouth.net you can always send me an email and uh, I'm more happy to answer it I don't I don't do a lot of research anymore you see I've got these the doctor says these should help you nighttime driving some so I said okay I'll, I'll wear them uh, I've just been been uh, fighting a uh, an eye infection for the last six weeks Finally got it cleared up, and uh, just all part of getting old. He says my eyes are good. I don't have any uh, any of the diabetic yeah, retinopathy. Ret retinopathy. Oh, come on. <laughs> I don't have any of that. He said, but that he says they're just they're just getting old. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, the VA decided I was so hard of hearing they gave me they pay me they pay me eighteen hundred bucks a month for it. So and I have two pair of hearing aids and I still can't. You'd rather not have that money coming in. Huh? You'd rather not have to have that money. No. <laughs> but it's nice to have it. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice to have it. Uh but that deal doesn't help me I can hear I can hear you talk, but if I don't look at you I, I take you don't lip read. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I don't really lip read, but it helps me it to helps, yeah. helps me to understand what you said. My wife gets so upset at me, she'd be across the room. Blah, 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 blah. What? Have you got your hearing aids on? <laughs> I said, Yeah, yeah, I got them on. I heard you speak, but I didn't understand what you said. <laughs> so, well, thanks, thanks for all that you've done. Uh, you know, I've, I've recorded as many of them as I could, and I don't know if you know it or not, but your videos get viewed a lot. Oh, is that right? I mean, like 200 views where the meetings are 50 or something. You're, you're a lot of people, and, well, and they will for a long time. You know, I was telling somebody I, the other I'll look day. and see and tell you, but yeah, yeah it, it, you, you, you average way over 100 views for each of your videos so i was talking to a guy the other day and i was telling him that you know i teach this class and he said just once a month i said well yeah i said i'd do it more if if you know because there's a lot I, I i can't cover what i'd like to cover in some of these classes maybe a time ago i said but i'm kind of like a library <laughs> he said a library i said yeah you go to the library, you check out a book, you take it back. Well, that's kind of the way I feel. I, I got a lot of information, and somebody comes, and I can check, he can check out what I know. And I said, the problem is, libraries get old, they shut them down and tear them down. And I says, I'm getting old, and they're gonna, I'm, they're gonna, it's gonna shut me down one of these days, and all that information is gonna be gone. Not all of it. Not all of it. That's good. That's good. You've heard of that Cebic, Cebic guy? You know, he was great. He had all kind of YouTubes. Passed away. And then I think the wife started selling his stuff, making a little money off of it. Yeah. it. Boy, he had a wealth of information. Yeah, I, I, look, I look at a lot of stuff on, you, on YouTube. Yeah. I don't necessarily agree with the guys, but it's just like I've t said to you before. 
You could make money doing it. Oh, I probably yeah. could if I if my, I had my, the, if I family. had I, I thought about it. I've got yeah. a uh, I've got two uh, I've got two uh, 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 people that I follow uh, quite uh, quite a bit. Matter of fact, I uh, one of them he put uh, one of them posts on uh, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And so this morning after I got up, that's what he turned over and watched his thirty about thirty forty minute. Video. Yeah, it'll turn into a full time job if you don't. Oh watch yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's a week behind. Yeah. So whatever I've seen is actually last week's. And uh, but uh, and this guy is amazing. He was having trouble with anxiety, and his doctor told him. He said, "Well, you got to this. You know, you need to. You need to. You need to go buy your little farm." And put your in, put your energies into a farm. So he started out with a nine acre farm, and he started doing this. His wife's got a master's in some sort of education, and uh, so they had this. And I, and I, when I started watching him, he had this little nine acre place, had fifteen goats, a bunch of chickens. They built a greenhouse. They raised all their own food and all this stuff. They they basically. Go to the grocery store about once every six months, <clears throat> and then all of a sudden I w looked at him one day, and he, they're going up in the woods. And he says, "Yep, this is going to be." He said, "I just bought uh, 500 acres up here in the woods in New Hampshire, and so I, it's gone now to where they have cleared off for pastures and built a house and a barn and a workshop and all this stuff." And they're just now starting to raise cattle, and they're totally off the grid. They're, uh, he said, and he said, I'm not off the grid because I'm angry at anybody or trying to. He says, but I looked at what the electric company was going to charge me to run electricity up here in the woods, versus putting up 15 kilowatts worth of solar panels. You doing it off of solar? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's about the only way you can do it. Yeah. And uh, he does have a 20k backup generator. Right. For uh, he said it gets in the wintertime it gets a little cloudy for a week or so up here. So he said I have to have the backup generator, and he just uses it to charge the batteries. I was gonna say, what's that run off of? Uh, for propane? Or propane. You got a thousand gallon tank yeah. buried. Okay. He's got a outdoor wood boiler that uh, uh, it cooks the wood and pulls the the gas. The, the, I don't know. I can't. I don't remember what the gas was that the that the wood cooking produces, but it sucks that gas and it burns that, and that's clean. The only the only residue that you have from that wood boiler is steam, basically condensation. And he, uh, when he built his house, he put in his floor, so he has radiant heat. Uh, and he says in the winter time, they're 20 below up there where he is, and his house will be. 70 degrees, and they burns it, it burns two cords of wood a week. So, so I mean, this guy. A lot of wood. Yeah, well, that's it. But he's got. He must have a big. 900 like, acres. I mean, 500 acres. Though, yeah. And uh, uh, matter of fact, he just he just built a woodshed mm. over here a month month ago that holds about about he, he runs about I see I think he said he runs about five to six cords of wood during the winter, and. Uh, so anyway, uh, he's uh, I just I'm fascinated by this guy. He can do anything. They just poured some concrete for some stuff the other day. Man, he's got he can, they get out there and form it up, put the rebar in it, all that good stuff. So I mean, he and it's just he and his wife. And uh, they got about 20 chickens, and they get 20 25 eggs a day out of them. Uh, she milks the cow every morning. I mean, it's it's you know, it's hard work, man. It ain't. It, it ain't like living on the prairie. It's a little, house a little on bit the prairie. more than a little bit more than a hobby farm, you yeah, know. It's a little house on the prairie. There, that's no joke. DJ, but uh, and then the, the, DJ, the other person I look at on YouTube is Carrie the Mortician. They're pretty good. I have learned a lot about the. Uh, Mortuary business and and uh, funeral homes and everything else, and uh, it's quite interesting though, really. That's amazing. Though. That's uh, 
So I, I get a lot out of it. I, I matter of what was I looking? Oh, I know. My printer came up and, the other day and said, replace the drum. So I said, well, okay, I got a drum. Because I bought, bought one one time because it said that after 10,000 copies that you may have to replace the drum. So I bought the drum. Put the drum in there. It still says replace the drum. And it won't work with that replace the drum on there. So I was sitting there and one morning, and I said, I'm Let me, I pulled up YouTube, and I put in brother so-and-so printer replace drum. Man, gave me, it's gone, it's working fine. <laughs> so I, I believe that the adage that if you want to know something, it's on Facebook someplace. And, uh, clean little wire. Huh? Clean little wire in there. Yeah, no. Some of those. Some of those well, yeah. Well, when, when you controls. when you put in a new when you put in a new uh, uh, toner, yeah. there's a, a wire back there that you can do it back and forth twice. And uh, uh, the only thing I got wrong with that printer now is when I copy something, when I scan something and print a copy, it has a black line down one side. Of it. I ain't that figured that out. Really, typically. 99.9% of the time, you've, you've got the big glass and you have a little strip glass that pulls it around. There's something on that strip glass. It yeah. could be, cause, but it doesn't do it on any other than I, if I put a, noc, a document in there to scan and copy. It doesn't. It doesn't. It but doesn't do it. It prints. On a print. But it doesn't do it. It goes by that, yeah. It doesn't do it if I put something in there to make a copy of it. It just does it when I scan it and copy. So I thought, well, maybe that's just something to keep copyrighted material or something. It was something I haven't been able to find any. There's all of our, all the modern copiers have smarts in them. So if you put a, some money or something like that on it, it's supposed to know yeah. checks yeah. and stuff. Yeah. But yeah, if you get, if you get, if your paper goes through, if it moves and goes through like this, yeah. and when you get your printout, that line goes this way. Yeah. There's something on that glass, and you sometimes you have to take a flashlight. It'll be, if it's dark, you can't just look and see it. Well, I have to do that. Shine oh, a light on it, and you'll be able to see it. It can be a, it can be a speck. Yeah. Like that. Because that that fluorescent tube goes across yeah. it, so that's a possibility. You can you can have a bad tube, with ba yeah. bad fluorescent bulb because they're LEDs, but yeah. I, maybe I've seen two of those in 20 years. Yeah. And the the, the glass being dirty. Yeah. I've seen hundreds of those. Well, I haven't had any problem with it other than that, other than that particular thing. And I, 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 I hadn't thought about it, but I think I'll just put that on YouTube and see if they find you somebody. You need another one? Hmm? You need another printer? Mm -hmm. No, I got two. I bought one of those. Now, that's the best thing in the world. Brother puts out, and Epson does, they put out a print. I quit getting inkjet printers, color printers, because... I either was either when I wanted to pr print something, I'd run out of one of the colors, or one of the color jets were were blocked up, and I was getting spotty color and that kind of stuff. And I so I finally said, I'm not buying another color printer. Well, I saw this thing advertised, it got good reviews, and I did some checking, so I bought it uh, a year and a half ago, and I have yet to run out of ink. It has tanks, mm -hmm. and you. Yeah, and I, that's a new thing. It's yeah. self cleaning. Mm -hmm. uh, I I did run into one time that it, 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 it had a one of the colors was kind of goofy, and I, and I put it on the clean, and it didn't. It helped a little bit, and then and I realized it had another thing. It said deep clean, and I hit that, and it took about 15 minutes. Perfect. So man, I'm I'm thinking of. I've got to replace the printer out at the base, and I'm thinking real serious about about replacing it with that. Cause you know, first thing I did after I got it is I ordered me some ink to have when I run out. <laughs> I ain't run out yet, and it's been it's it's come it this if it lasts this summer it'll be two years. Hmm. So it's it's great and it's got good color, but uh, and I don't. There were times when I made it. I'm trying to keep track of everybody getting down there too. Uh, I, I used to used to print a lot of stuff that was color, 
and that's why I had the color printer. And uh, I'd read a lot of read a lot of stuff on on uh, the uh, uh, laser color printers, and they were kind of you know, hard to find those now. Everything's moving to LEDs. The yeah, LEDs are high enough resolution. You can still you can still buy them, but they're a lot higher end machines. Yeah, and uh, but color all, all the different color toner and everything else that you had to have for for one of those. I said, nah, I'm not, I don't I don't need that. So it's not like you're just putting the, the ink in there. Anymore. Yeah, yeah. But this this one really works really. Oh, by the way, that's another thing. We didn't mention that. Even if you don't have a one like this, it's got a nice little place to put us. Get you a sponge. Go buy you a cheap saucer, and every time you get rid of saw, it's just soak that sponge in the water, wring it out, and that way a clean tip will work a whole lot better than one that's got old solder and everything else on. I mean, even this one. I do it with this one. You can see how the clean the tip, you know. And then that's the that's the that's the surface that I use. So uh, that that's another tip that you really need to do. And I don't care what you solder. Whenever you get rid of solder, just wet that. I keep a I keep a little bottle with one of those flip tops on it, full of water, and I just take it, squirt it in there when I get rid of solder, and it just goes down. So it's uh, it's it's a good thing to do. And it keeps your tip from that. That's that keeping that solder and everything else will eventually uh, corrode that tip to where it, uh, it, it'll, it won't it, it, it won't solder well. And uh, there's not a there's not a thing you can do to it. You can take a file, but if you take a file and file it off, usually you file all the good stuff that was on there off too. So that's not a good idea to file that tip. Uh, at least uh, I have. They, they say you can, but I have always, I have always had a problem after I've done it, and so I don't do it anymore. Uh, I change tips if I have a a uh, particular iron that has a uh, tip on it. And, and those Weller irons, you can get all kinds of tips for them. Uh, they, they put out pretty much the same model that they always have. It's just a different name, I mean a different uh, designation. But they have all, that's what this is. This is a Weller tip. And this thing works really good. I've got a, I've got an electric solder sucker. And uh, it works pretty good. But the problem with it is, <coughs> is <clears throat> it sucks the solder inside and eventually that little tube gets you know and it's, it's old I mean I, I guess I, I just took over the radio shop with Bell in about 1980 and they closed us down they closed us down about 1988 <clears throat> when they went to cell service and uh They took, they took everything that was a capital tool that had a serial number on it or a tag on it. <clears throat> I don't know what they did with it. But all the rest of the stuff, they just threw it in the dumpster when they closed down the shop. So I, I went back to craft at that time. And so that afternoon when I got in from work, I went dumpster diving. I got all kinds of stuff. It's amazing what companies will throw away. They threw away a Cushman CE3 that I had just, the month before they closed it down, had just gotten it back from being recalibrated and everything else. I took it home. <clears throat> and, uh, because it was not a capital tool. They had, they had decapitalized it. <clears throat> And uh, the guy that had the radio shop before me kept it around because they always had need, they always had need for two of them at times. So he kept the old one because they could do a lot of the repair work with that one. It wasn't calibrated, but they could do the repair work and then turn it over to the to the, 
a set place on the bench that it had the calibrated uh, device and they could calibrate it and, te and do it. So, <clears throat> and I told them I needed a second one, and I said I've got one, but it needs to be sent. He said, "Send it back, send it back. We're not going to spend twelve thousand dollars to buy a new one." <clears throat> so I sent it back, and I had just gotten it back a month before they they closed us down. So anyway, guys, it's been fun. Uh, Thank you very much. Yeah. I have Thank enjoyed. Doing this as much as you, hopefully, you got out of it. Uh, but it just, I, 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 I did. I sat, I sat in my shop this afternoon. Well, actually, this morning. And I debated with myself. Now, if you've ever debated with yourself. <laughs> <laughs> See how that comes out, huh? <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, every time I'd come to a conclusion, I'd say, okay, this is what I'm going to do. Well, didn't set well with me. So I finally, I said, well, the only part of my debate that, that uh, seemed logical and seemed the right thing to do was what I've done. Well, that's the best thing so, for you. Because uh, yeah, it's going to get to a point, uh, I, don't, uh, I don't, do, not, do not like to drive at night. <clears throat> And now in the summertime, it's still daylight when we have the meetings. But I may, I may be, I may be absent at some of them <coughs> uh, during normal day, normal time. Uh, and if my hearing keeps getting bad, I, I, I may have to learn digital. That may be the only way I'll, I'll be able to communicate. <coughs> so. Anyway, <laughs> Are anybody using so I'm in the computer industry, AI is everywhere. People are using it for all kinds <laughs> of things. It seems to me it could be really good for digital signal processing and stuff like that. Oh, I'm sure I, I'm sure it will be. I started on computers nineteen seventies. I don't know when. And that was the first thing I, the first thing I learned was I learned a little bit of basic. That's the first thing I started working on was AI. I saw it and I said, man, that is great. If I can put a, if I can put all my, um, uh, uh, I, I had things I worked on in the telephone company. We had, uh, we had uh, uh, books that you could go in there and go down a page and, oh, well, this is what it's doing. And it would send you right to a page and tell you how to fix it. Hmm? I said, man, if I could put that in the computer, that'd be great. And that's kind of what AI is. AI is only intelligent by what you put into it. Uh, now, of course, that's gotten a lot more sophisticated now than that. Now, I mean, I understand some of it can teach itself, and uh, which is dangerous as far as I'm concerned. Uh, now I go back to Hal. Everybody know who Hal is? <laughs> Uh, and, uh, that new movie, X Machina, where the girl yeah, is a robot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> but you're right, you know, and, that, and that's, what's, that's what's coming out. Everything. I mean, what's, uh, who putting out this new cell phone that's AI powered? Now, I don't know what, I don't know what it does, you know, but I'm sure you're going to be able to say, I need to talk to Jim. Yep. It'll just call. Your, our, the phones, phones that most of us have in our pockets, the smartphones, have that capability now. Mine if don't. If it's a smartphone. Mine's yeah. smart, but it ain't that smart. <laughs> there, most of us don't have those features turned on because it's kind of like the the Google and Alexa stuff. It has to be listening all the time. Yeah, I hate, and I hate the, I hate the, I hate the self-completing crap when you do, when you're trying to write a letter. <laughs> oh yeah. You know. Yeah. You put in two or three letters. If you misspell it by two or three letters, it puts a whole different word in If you it. really want to see something funny, uh, start a text message, hit the microphone, and put it kind of across the room where it can't really hear well, and just watch what it does. Oh, I'm sure. I, I pulled out my phone one day. I didn't realize it even it was in that area, and I looked at it, and it looked like something out of the Satanist Bible. Oh, listen. Something. It was just wild how I did what it picked. I, 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 uh, I write little short stories, and I, and I do it not to be an author, 
because I never see, I never keep. Whenever I, whenever I get through with them, I usually delete them because they make no sense. I would, I was work, the other day I was working on one, and I've got one, I've got one I've been working on for a year or so. It's, it's at about almost eighty thousand words. And I just do it to keep my mind active. And I, the other day I was sitting there typing, and I looked up on a screen, and I said, what in the hell is that? <laughs> I'd hit a couple of wrong letters, and, the, and that self-correcting crap stuck stuff in there, and, and it, it was one, there's a word about that long, man, I couldn't figure out, I couldn't even pronounce it. And, uh, but yeah, they, they uh, my phone's about 10 to 12 years old, so. It does not have all that stuff. As long as you don't try to take it to the, to another network or take it off the network, say you get a new phone, and then you say, oh, well, I really like my old phone, and try to bring it back. Oh, yeah. Oh, that. I know that. <clears throat> well, that's the reason I, this, the, the one I had before that was probably 20 years old, and uh, it was not, it was doing stuff that, that, it wouldn't do stuff that everybody else was doing. So I finally upgraded to another phone. And, uh, but it still doesn't do everything. And I don't want it to. I tell people, I said, I bought a cell phone to, hello, goodbye, hello, goodbye. Now I do use it, now the, the, I do use it to read my emails and I do use it for texting, but that's about it. All right, let's go. You can go down there and get you a seat. Thank you.